Retiming a clip is pretty self-explanatory in what it does. It allows us to either take a small portion that we wanna use, make it longer, or take a whole time lapse and make it play through a bit faster. So there are multiple different ways of going about doing this within DaVinci Resolve, and there's actually some special stuff that you can also do. I'm gonna show you that, some ways to spice up a freeze frame, and uh, yeah, so hopefully we can end up using those couple of clips that are a little too short or a little too shaky and actually use them in our project. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. <laughs> Explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for DaVinci Resolve, like titles, transitions, slideshows and infographs, like bar charts and callouts, and much, much more. Link in the description for more information. Okay, so here is pretty much what we're working with today. We are working on a street food video, let's say, and we have some street food vendors, and then we have this shot here. I wanna show off like people walking around. We have this guy here who has a green shirt, and maybe it's a little too bright for our project. We don't really want him there, but we want this crowd here in our shot, but we have to play it over the course of this time, and then it has this panning up, so we can't really use that. So let's first go through what we would typically do, right? So I'm for now, I'm just going to Bring it up, actually, let, let's just duplicate it now. I'm just gonna hold Alt and duplicate it. You don't really need to do this, but I just wanna do it so that we can uh, see the difference in, in shots here. So we're first going to cut off in this clip, we're just gonna cut off that beginning part and we're gonna, uh, we don't want it to go up. So probably like right there, we're going to then uh, cut this as well, right? So we're gonna get rid of that. This is the only clip that we have to fill up this whole gap. So let's just put some, um, markers here so we know the gap, right? So that's the gap and we only have this short little clip here. We have a couple of different things we do. We can right click and we can go into change clip speed. That gives us a couple of different options. We can change the speed of the clip. We can slow it down to make it longer, right? So we could take this and let's go 50%, right? And there's a couple of other options over here. We'll go into those in here in a second, but we'll, we'll click that. And we didn't really see the, the, the change here, but what it actually did is it took the position of our in and out, and it just took the clip and it made it 50%, right? So instead of doing that, one of the other things that we can do is we can click in here and then we can enable uh, ripple sequence. And what that's going to do is it's going to maintain all of our gaps and it's going to push out the rest of the timeline. Oh, 50%, right? Yeah. So we do, we have that option as well, but now we're extending our duration, but we're preserving the spacing that we previously had. So sometimes that is beneficial. While we're in here, we can go through all of the other settings that we have here. Reverse obviously plays the clip in reverse. And then we also have freeze frame. Uh, with freeze frame, I guess I can quickly show you that. Uh, so let's say we wanted to show off this little um, thing going on here. Uh, let's say we, we'll just cut this here and just use this clip and we'll just solo this. So we'll turn off all the other stuff. And we just wanna use just this frame here. So what we can do is we can right click and we can go into back into here and we can go freeze frame, right? And then when we click that, this whole clip is now uh, just that one frame. And we can extend this frame and, and make it longer if we want to, right? So it's just that thick. But a static clip is kind of lame to look at. So what we could do is instead of just having leaving it like that, is we could turn on like, let's say dynamic zoom. So now it's zooming, uh, in this case it's zooming out, we can click swap and then it will zoom in. But we're not really saying what we're going to zoom in or zoom out. Uh, what we could do is come over here, we're gonna go to the drop down to dynamic zoom and turn it on so you'll see it, it's, it's like uh, white now and if it's off, it's gray. And now we can see we have these two boxes. So we just have a starting point and an ending point. And we can click on, let's say the ending point and we can zoom in and say, okay, when it's done, it's going to zoom into this little area. Now, if we turn this off and we watch this, it's now going to zoom into that little area. So that's something that we could do if we're gonna do like a freeze frame, right? Something super quick, right? The other options, if we're coming back to this clip, because we need to fill this gap, is we can use some easier uh, controls, which is this retime control. And what's cool about this is now we can drag different uh, portions. So if I bring this over, and there's a couple of different types of controls on here, but if we grab from the top, what we're doing is we're gonna pull it and we can see that now we turn this down to 17% speed. But there's something that we're going to see with this. If we watch this, this is 17% speed, significantly slower than what it was filmed at. If we watch this, we have a lot of stuttering going on, right? It's looking real rough. 
Um, and you would never put this into a project. So what we could do, 17% uh, is a little extreme. I probably wouldn't go this low. I'd probably, the maximum I'd probably go is 25. So let's bump it back a little bit to like 25. Um, you can really do whatever you want, but let's say 25. If we come down here, we have this uh, retime process. And, and what this is going to allow us to do is process the video a little bit differently. Currently it says it's pulling the project settings. So if we take a look at the project settings, see what it's actually pulling in our master settings, scroll down to the bottom, we have this frame interpolation. What it's going to be doing is nearest. And that's typically what you always want your project to, to be at, because let's say you have multiple different types of video clips on a 30 frames per second timeline. So you have a 25 frames per second, you have a 24 frames per second, you have a 60 frames per second clip, and you have them all on one timeline. Uh, this is what you're typically going to want to have to make them all just look good together on the timeline. Uh, but what that's going to do is it's going to pull whatever the nearest frame that is a full frame that has the ability to access. This isn't any fancy stuff. It's just pulling a frame from whichever one's the closest. But what if we can take our GPU and have it create frames in between there by predicting where pixels would be? Well, we can do that. If we come into here and we go to optical flow, what this is going to do is our GPU is now going to make up frames uh, and predict where things will be in the frame. So now if we watch this, that was really stuttery video clip, it's looking a lot more believable. Now we will have in different portions of the clip, we will have some weird stuff happen, but nine times out of 10, you can you can get away with this for sure. You can for sure get away with this. If, if my video was on this for a brief time, I think that this is probably a little too long, but if my video was showing a, a group of people walking by, you could definitely get away with this, you know, a two second cutaway. Uh, you could definitely sell this, you know what I mean? And, and get away with that for sure. Uh, and that's just taking, you know, a clip that was very short and making it longer and throwing that optical flow. But there are additional settings that we can also do on with this control. I wanna quickly show you here. Let's turn this back on. And let's say we want it to actually use this whole clip, right? but we wanted it to quickly go by this guy and then slow down here and then uh, be slow. And then once it gets to here, then we speed up again. So we can come into here. Let's go back into those settings that we had, right? And now, right as the guy goes off screen, we can come into here and clicking right here, we can go add speed point, come to here. Click in here, add speed point. Now we have these little controls down here and there's two different portions of the controls. We have the bottom half, which allows us to pick where this control is going to affect the video clip, right? So we pick this portion. So right as the guy leaves and then we can pick this one right as we're pretty much getting, not seeing the uh, people down here anymore, right? So right about there, we have to move our playhead so we can actually see that. Uh, but now what we can do is the top half of this is going to, be the portion that is going to control the speed between these two. So currently from this one to this one, if I move it this way, it's going to take this portion and make it slower. So if I drag this now, we can see that our duration down here, it's moving our whole clip, right? We could fill up this whole gap here like that. And then we could come into here and we can turn on optical flow. And now if we watch this clip, it's going to start at hundred percent and then it's going to slow down, but it's a very abrupt slowdown. So maybe we want to add some type of easing in. Um, so there's a whole nother set of controls that we can also use in conjunction with these two as well. Is we, if we come into retime curve, this is going to allow us to change some curves. Typically, I wouldn't say to use this retime frame setting that's here by default. If you don't see this, uh, if you're zoomed out too far and you don't see that, just zoom in a bit and you'll see this drop down. We're gonna go into the drop down. We're gonna turn off retime frame and turn on retime speed. Same exact control, just it's, it's, it's viewed uh, the information a little differently. So we can see that we have it play at 100% and then a you know drastic drop down to 27%. So if we were to click on here, to make this active and click this little button. Now we can add easing in and we can make that transition from one speed to the other um, more subtle. So now if we watch that same thing, it's going normal and then it slowly starts to slow down. I feel like that looks so much better than the abrupt. Now it really depends on your project and what you're going for, 
but I just want to show you that these options do exist. Um, and all of these controls, these controls work in conjunction of one another. So if we move this down or up, we can see the percentage change in the same way here. If we move this left and right, we're picking the portion within the raw clip that we're going to be applying this to. Uh, if we move it up and down, we're changing the speed from within that area. Uh, and then if we want to, we can add more by just clicking this little button. We can see our little control is now there. Um, and we can, let's say, add another one here. We can take this and make this faster, slower, whatever we want. Uh, but those are pretty much the controls for uh, making clips faster or slower. Optical flow is definitely something that is beneficial. I wouldn't say to add it to your whole project because it is extra compute time to predict where pixels will be. Uh, and it's a whole nother set of uh, uh, um, processing that has to be done on your project. So don't use it unless you need to. The only other thing I would say if you're using the optical flow is to, to, to use it on clips that are not going to be on screen for a long portion of time where someone can really sit there and analyze the clip because you can start to see the couple of defects. Um, the only other things that I would stay away with optical flow is anything that has to do with fire that typically doesn't look all that great. You're gonna get a lot of artifacts and water just because those two things are so unpredictable that your GPU is going to really struggle with trying to predict the motion that happens in there. So again, keeping it short on the optical flow, the clips that are on screen, keeping them short so people can really can't see all the flaws that are in the clip. If you do use it, I think it does save a project and it kind of gets you out of a sticky situation. I think the only thing I really didn't go over is just playing a clip in reverse. And I briefly talked about it, but uh, I'll just quickly show you here. Uh, just dragging a clip down, dropping it on our timeline, right clicking on it, going into change clip speed. And then we can come down here to uh, reverse clip. We can also change the speed if we want to, but it's just gonna be obviously negative numbers clicking that and then our clip is now going to play in reverse. So we have that ability there as well. So I think that concludes all the different ways that I would go into changing clip speed. Hopefully you found this information useful. And uh, yeah, with that being said, my name's JR. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good one.